And then just to add maybe some more, some more words of benefit that is particularly related to Ahlul Kitab, because here, this is Musa alayhi, this is uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu, who had in his hand some papers or some scriptures that the Jews had given him from the Torah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he's mentioned some of the narrations, he became angry with Umar. And he said to Umar, O son of Al-Khattab, do you doubt? Do you doubt in it? For indeed I have come with that which is pristine and pure and white, this Bayda and Naqiyya. That I've been sent with that which is Bayda, that which is white and pure, meaning this religion of Al Islam. And that is because of the fact that the time of Musa has passed, and his law, and his Sharia, and his book, the book that he was sent with, has been abrogated. As is the case with Isa, alayhi salam. The law, the Sharia that he came with, and the book that he was sent with, it has also been abrogated. So just as a new prophet comes, and he has been, and he is, and he is given a new Sharia, then that which was previous to that, then it is abrogated, and all of it is abrogated by the sending of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And in this hadith is a proof that it is not permissible to look into the books of the previous prophets because the people who claim to be following those prophets like the Jews and the Christians that they have distorted those scriptures right from the early times they distorted those scriptures and because many of the laws if they remain undistorted have been abrogated so these are the two reasons number one that they changed the book with their hands, the rabbis and the priests. And secondly, even if there is something in there that is correct, then it has been abrogated. And if there is something in there that is truthful, then our religion already endorses it. So it is haram to return to those books for guidance. So the question here is, is it haram absolutely to look into the Bible and the Old Testament, what they refer to today as the New Testament and the Old Testament, or that which remains of the Injil after its distortion, and that which remains of the Torah after its distortion, and that which remains of the Zabur, the Psalms of Dawood or the Psalms of David, after their distortion, is it permissible to open up the Bible and start looking into it? Then there are two sayings of Ahlul Ilm in general. One of them is that it is haram for everyone, the scholar and the general person. It is not allowed to look into anything that remains in the hands of the Jews and the Christians of the scripture because of what we have already mentioned. And there's a large body of scholars that held this position. The second position of the scholars is that it is allowed for the scholar to look into the Torah and the Injil or that which remains of it in distorted form, meaning the Old Testament and the New Testament and the Psalms of David and so on. And they allow that so as to refute the claims of the Jews and the Christians and to aid and support the da'wah of al-Islam. And this is, a, this is the saying of also a large number of scholars. And those scholars, they have authored many works in that regard that show and highlight the distortions of these books that were revealed at the hands of Ahlul Kitab. The people of the book that they distorted them, they changed them deliberately. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah he authored a work, Al Jawabu Sahih, Liman Baddala Deenul Masih. And that is a tremendous work by Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah that is entitled The Correct Response to the One 
who changed and altered the religion of the Messiah, meaning Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salam. And this work, of course, contains many numerous quotes from the Torah and the Injil. And likewise, his student Ibn Qayyim also has a book, Rahimahullah, which he entitled Hidayatul, Hidayatul Haraya Fi Ajwibatil Yahud Wan Nasara. So this work of Ibn Qayyim also quotes from the Bible and the Old Testament, the New Testament and the Old Testament, or, the, or what remains of the, of the Torah and the Injil. Likewise, Imam al Qurtubi and others who read into the previous scriptures in support of the religion of Al-Islam. So what we conclude from that is that it is not allowed for the general folk to read the Injil and the Torah, nor is it allowed for individual students of knowledge who are not grounded and they haven't reached that level of knowledge. And it is a sin for a person to open the Torah and the Injil for the layman to open it up and start reading it is sinful for them why because of this a hadith of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam that if this is what he said to Umar then what about you if this is what he said to Umar then what about you so it is not allowed for, so, for small students of knowledge and definitely not allowed for the layman However, for the alim, it is permitted as a form of refutation of Ahlul Kitab and their false claims and in defense and support of Islam.